I tell you, sir, you can't make it. The fog's so thick down here, you can slice it. But I can't float around in this roof like an oyster. Catch off those flares, will you? Looks awfully bad. He can't make it. Is he going to try it? Well, he's crazy if he does. Oh, he's crazy, all right. I disagree with you, sir. But he'll try it anyhow. Cut his way through this. Cut his way through the Borneo jungle to rescue Timmons, didn't he? That's not a London fog. You have a chance, sir, even with flares. Will you please touch them off? You'll crack up, sir. Flares or no flares, I'm coming down. He's coming down. Touch him off. Touch off your feet, boy! Why do you want to over here? Touch him off, Phyllis! That's it, Algy. By Jove, I'll wager that's it. Let's go. Oh, but you. Oh, imagine it, Algy. Just imagine. You were together again, as always. Oh, I can see us now. Faring forth into the fog-drenched night. Finding adventure. New thrills for this bored and jaded mind. Come on. 
Oh, but you... Come on, Harry, we haven't a moment to lose it's 40 miles. But you are about to become a father. Oh. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Of course, if I thought there was any danger... What? Desert when duty calls? No. Your place is here. No, old friend. Goodbye. But you... No, Algy. Stay here. Have your baby. Oh, uh, uh, give my love to Gwen, won't you? She'll see you through. What happened? He fell into a marsh. Did he? Hurry, will you? Captain Drummond. Where did you find my car? In a ditch a few miles down the road. I was riding in a taxi to Rockingham Lodge. Yes, yes. Did you find the handkerchief? Handkerchief? Yes, Terry. A daintily perfumed one it should be. Belonging to a young lady, do you understand? No, I'm afraid I don't, sir. But I must explain. Young ladies who borrow cars on lonely roads always leave perfumed handkerchiefs. Really, sir? Yes, usually with initials. How very interesting, sir. Ah. Esprit de nuit. I beg your pardon, sir? Spirit of the night, Tenny. Does it portend, sir? Tenny, it portends, it portends. And the initials, sir? Strangely absent, not at all, according to the book. Would it be quite proper, sir, for the initials to appear up in the young lady's bag? Oh, occasionally, but not quite in harmony with the best authorities. <laughs> Probably the young lady is an amateur of this sort of thing. But here they are. P.C., if I'm not mistaken. And you're not mistaken. P.C. they appear to be, and P.C. they are. Now, Tenny, give me a girl's name. A romantic name to fit these uninspiring initials. Would Miss... Miss Clavering do so? Excellent, Tenny. It sounds as if it belongs to her. Oh, it does belong to her, sir. And there is a Miss Clavering. A Miss uh, Phyllis Clavering. Residing at Greystone Manor, sir. It begins, Tenny. 
It's taking form. It builds. It grows, you see. And who else resides at Greystone Manor? Now, let me see. Um, two gentlemen, I believe, sir. Two gentlemen? Yes, sir. Well, who are they? What do they do? Where do they come from? Where are they going? Regarding those things, sir, I regretfully admit ignorance. Complete ignorance? Complete, sir. Yet you knew the young lady's name. Her cards were in the bag, sir. Oh, I see. There were cards in the bag. Yes, sir. Conveniently informing you, I suppose, that the young lady lived at Greystone. Oh, no, sir. A few weeks ago, a letter addressed to Miss Clavering arrived at Rockingham Lodge by mistake, sir. And you delivered it? Yes, sir. In person? Yes, sir. To Miss Clavering? No, sir. Then to whom, Danny? To whom? Do I have to cross-examine you every time I want to find out something? It helps, sir. Very well. To whom? To one of the gentlemen, sir. The one with the beard. Aha! Uh -huh. I beg your pardon. I said, ha ha! Quite so. And this was at Greystone Manor? Yes, sir. Then something tells me, Teddy, we're going to pay a visit to Greystone. We, oui, sir? I. Quite so. Miss Clavering, Miss Phyllis Clavering, that Captain Drummond is here. Will you wait in the drawing room, please? Thank you. I understand. Well, Rockingham Lodge and Greystone Manor are friends. Oh. Yeah. Uh, will you join me? Thank you. You uh, wanted to see Miss Clavering? Uh, yes. I came to return her bag. Found on the road, perhaps? No. As a matter of fact, in my car. Oh. Oh, I see. Then it was your car Miss Clavering used. Yeah. This is Captain Drummond. How do you do? He's bought your bag. Oh. Yes, I believe you'll find everything there. You're very kind, Captain Drummond. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure, I assure you. That is all, my dear. Then you'll excuse me. Surely. You're puzzled. Definitely. An explanation is in order, Captain. An hour ago, Miss Clavering appropriated your car and attempted to proceed to London. An extraordinary instant, I admit. But when I explain that she is uh, suffering from a persecution complex, I think you'll understand. And you were the persecutor? For the moment, she believes that I am responsible for her brother's death. And uh, <laughs> she also believes that I am plotting to steal her inheritance. <laughs> Are you? Miss Clavering's inheritance is safely invested in war loans. 
Series D, to be exact. Uh, I have some. They're very good, too. Yes, an excellent investment. Uh, Mr. Meridu, you mentioned a brother. Yes, poor chap. He was accidentally killed while we were hunting several weeks ago. Then Miss Clavering, perhaps, is a relative of yours? Oh, no. Daughter of an old friend, a very dear friend who died several years ago. Deep grief accounts for her state of mind and is the explanation of our presence here in Greystone. Oh, I see. Ah, Mrs. Selden, my sister. How do you do? Professor Stanton, this is Captain Drummond. How do you do? Happy to meet you, Captain. Professor Stanton is a psychiatrist. He is confident that a few months in the country will see Miss Clavering herself again. Unquestionably. I see. Of course, Captain, I may count on you to treat the matter with confidence. Gossip has an ugly way of spreading, even in the country. Yes, I think I understand. Well, uh, good night. And thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Meridue. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I tell you nothing. Is that you, Drummond? Ah, Colonel. Glad to see you. You know, after a trip like I've had, it's a pleasure to come back and find such a smiling countenance. Yeah, I know all about that. Yeah, now you've kept me waiting. An hour. Well, I'm awfully sorry, sir, but you see, oh, I... Oh, I know, I know. You, you were never on time in your life. <laughs> well, now that you made yourself at home, and I'm here, and you're here... Let's begin. Sit down. Uh, <clears throat> you, I, um... I, I, I want you to do something for me. Gladly, sir. Go away. What? You mean leave London? Leave England. But why? Because whenever you come back from having been somewhere, things begin to happen. Oh, is that all you wanted to see me about? Now, as a favor to me, go away. Anywhere. Drive back to, uh, to, to, to Borneo for a couple of weeks. Anywhere. Now, won't you? Oh, but Commissioner, I... Now, now, please. I, 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 I'm on a vacation. Yes, I, uh, I, I want to concentrate upon my golf. Uh, you know that slice of mine. Well, I'm determined to get rid of it. Now, like a good fellow, fly that aeroplane of yours back across the channel to, uh, uh, to, to Paris. Uh, yes, that's it, Paris. Yes, you like Paris, you? Yes. Uh, Colonel. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion that you're dealing from the bottom of the deck. What's that? You're quite certain you're not down here in a big case? Oh, rubbish, rubbish. I, I, I'm on a vacation, I tell you. And, and I don't want it ruined by you. But why should I go away when within two hours of my homecoming... Ah, I knew it. I knew it. Now I suppose you're going to tell me that you've met a girl. I have met a girl. Oh, yes, yes. And the girl's in distress, I suppose. 
She is in distress. Ah, yes. And you are going to rescue her from some bearded villain, eh? Colonel, he is bearded. What's this? Where'd you get this? You, are you asking me to believe that this girl you've met is imprisoned at Greystone Manor? That is exactly what I'm asking you to believe. Ten minutes ago, I saw... A... Yes, well, never mind what you saw. Where's this envelope? Oh, it wasn't there. It wasn't where? In my car. Uh, oh, my hat. You are an adult pate. Now, look here, Hugh. There's nothing wrong at Greystone Manor. Norman married you is, uh, is a friend of mine. Well, I've known him for years. Why, he's the only man I can beat at golf. <laughs> yes. No, no, he, he and his sister are doing a fine thing. But, Inspector, don't call me Inspector. This fine thing you speak of, uh, does it concern Miss Clavering? Uh, oh, why, in the name of my sainted aunt, have you come back to torment me? Well... Yeah, yes, you. Uh, it does concern Miss Blavery. And I want you to listen to me. Sit down. If you will only scotch the wheels of your imagination, you may understand that this girl is not responsible for anything she said or does. But, Colonel, I tell you that you're telling me... I'm telling you, Hugh Drummond. Commissioner, where's your romance? Romance? That's the trouble with you, my boy. This eternal quest for melodrama and romance. Now, you, you will do what I ask, won't you? But, uh, no, I won't hear another word about it. No, I'm on a vacation, and I want peace and quiet, you. Please, peace and quiet. Is it a boy or a girl? Neither, sir. It's Captain Drummond calling from Rockingham Lodge. Oh, thank you. Hello, Hugh. Was that all, fellow? Oh, but I couldn't now. Oh, but, Algy, I'm depending on you. Imagine this. The road to Denmore. Fog and such a fog, Algy. A dank and dismal dusk on the depressing stretches of dreary Denmore. Quite a few D's, don't you think? Eh, eh. And then, Algy, appearing suddenly from nowhere, like an angel from the clouds, a girl. A beautiful girl. A lovely, ravishing girl. A girl? Uh, uh, but, Hugh, you know, tonight's a sort of crisis in my life. You know, it isn't every day that a chap becomes a father. I just got to be here, don't you think? Or, or do you? Uh, you're right, Algy. Of course you're right. If there's danger to face, I'll face it. Alone. That delightful atrocity donated by our aunt Zephy will haunt us no more. May I express approval, sir? Uh, you may. Very well, sir. I approve, sir. Well, it's all right, Penny. It's Algy. Uh, he thinks I'm shot. Are you expecting Mr. Longwood, sir? Well, if he's the Algy I know, he'll be here. And when he comes, tell him I've gone to Greystone Manor. Very well, sir. He'll need a gun, I dare say. Yes, an excellent idea. Yes, I rather think so, sir. 
Nurse! Yes, Mr. Lawrence. My friend, Mr. Norman, he's been shot. He needs me. Well, then why don't you go to him, sir? The baby! Don't you think that I ought to... There's nothing, sir, that you can do for five or six hours. Are you sure? You can take my word for it. The measle is in the drawing room, sir. Right. Captain Drummond. Oh, you've come here to see me concerning the note left in your hat by Miss Clavering. Colonel Nielsen was kind enough to explain. This gentleman has tried to convince me that Miss Clavering's attempt to leave here this afternoon was due to some mental condition. Frankly, without mincing matters, my dear sir, I don't believe a word of it. I've seen the young lady twice, and she's just the same as you or I. Do you know what you're saying? I've had this speech very carefully prepared. Now, look here. Uh, you listen Colonel, to me. Colonel, uh, one moment, please. You believe Miss Clavering is being held here against her will. You stated very clearly. And you've come to convince Colonel Nielsen that I am, what shall I say, a scoundrel. A bearded scoundrel. Commissioner, the note you read referred to an envelope addressed to you. Here it is. Read that. Go on, out loud. Dickory, dickory, duck. The mouse ran up the clock. And when she got there, the cupboard was bare. And so the poor doggy had none. Uh, I warned him not to annoy you, Mary Dew. And my word for it, he won't do it again. Drummond, this has gone beyond a joke. You leave here immediately. And that's an order. Leave here. All right. I, uh, suppose I should be angry, Captain. But you're not. I quite understand the romantic interest that you so chivalrously display. Yeah. On the other hand, youth is impetuous and, uh, sometimes foolhardy. So, reading between the lines, I should mind my own business. The virtues of such a course have undeniable advantages. Yes, I dare say. I dare say. Well, au revoir. You too, pickle face. discussing golf sticks with Colonel Nielsen. You know Colonel Nielsen? You gave him the envelope? <laughs> he threatened to draw and quarter me. Why? Didn't you read what was in it? Well, the envelope contained an assortment of Mother Goose rhymes. Oh. Then someone must have... Substituted them for what you wrote. That's the only way it could have happened. Ah. Oh. Now, let's get to the bottom of this, shall we? Who was it they murdered tonight on the moor? Saunders, the chauffeur. He was helping me escape. You are being held here against your will, isn't that it? Why? Well, I, I don't know exactly, and, and it's yet in a way I do. You see, um, my brother... 
It does sound a bit queer, doesn't it? Well, a little mixture, we say. Do you think I'm crazy? Well, if you are, I'd rather like it. Well, and until his death, two months ago, Ted, that was my brother, was Mr. Merrigan's secretary. How did Ted die? He was shot during a hunt. You think it was an accident? No. Married you murdered him in cold blood. Why? I don't know. What was in those papers you were so anxious for Colonel Nielsen to see? I don't know that either. But if you wrote them... I didn't. Ted wrote them weeks ago. Well, if he sent them to you, you must know what was in them. He didn't send them to me. I found them in the garden. The envelope had come apart. And the writing was so blurred and so covered in mud that I couldn't read most of it. Anyway, what could you make out? Anything? Well, there was um, an astounding discovery concerning Major Mayhew. And two whole pages of numbers. A series of numbers, it seemed to me. After Ted died, Mr. Meridue sent for me. He's an old friend of my father. He asked a lot of strange questions. I guess my answers must have made him believe that I knew what Ted had written. Because I've been a prisoner here ever since. But I told you, Mr. Longworth, Captain Drummond left just a few moments ago. Who wasn't that his... Oh, I see. He's gone, you say? Yes, Mr. Longworth. Oh, thank you, yes. Yeah. Uh, the fogs up this way are very similar to the fogs in London, aren't they? Quite similar, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Have you seen anything unusual? No. No, I haven't. But sometimes at night there are the most peculiar noises. Like something shrieking. Then the lights go down and up. Then it'll stop and start all over again. Are you comfortable, dear? I'm all right. And have you taken your medicine? Remember what Professor Sandlin told you, dear. To find your way back to health and happiness, you must do exactly as he says. You try and get a quiet, comfortable night. And don't let those dreadful imaginings upset you again. I'll be in my room, dear. If you want anything, just call me. Captain Drummond. Captain Drummond? What was he doing? I don't know, sir. Be before I could say anything, he and the other gentleman... What other gentleman? Uh, Mr. Longwood, sir. They set upon me. That's all I can remember. And that's enough. Drummond? So there you have Phyllis's story. Uh, exciting, isn't it? But it could have happened, Algie. It could have happened. I don't know. If you're considering her as a possible mother for your children, I'd be awfully careful, old boy. When Gwen and I... I have an idea. Oh. Uh, Hugh, if you don't, don't interrupt me, please. But Hugh, I am. I'm sorry, old boy, but you've just got to excuse me. Huh? What? Huh? Uh, well, where are you going? Well, I'm, uh, I, I, I'll be right back. Beautiful technique, sir. Uh, thank you, Tanny. Thank you. If I'm not mistaken, sir, the gentleman has uh, laid his egg. Yes, well, that's biologically impractical, but quite expressive. I rather like it, sir. Now, if this had been a bullet... Bullet? 
That's it, Tenny. Bullet. Lock him up in the hall cupboard. Algy! 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 What are you doing? Come on, I've got it. Wait, wait, wait a minute, old boy. How would you do, sir? What game are we playing? Oh, come on. You're certain, are you, that this is the bullet that killed Ted Clavering? Oh, yes, sir. That was Exhibit A. Very good, Constable. I'll, uh, I'll forward a recommendation for your promotion. Oh, thank you, Commissioner Nielsen. All right. Good night, sir. Good night. I say, oh, boy, do you mind if you use your phone? Come on. Come on. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Yes, of Scotland Yard. I want you to send two of your men, or go yourself, to Rockingham Lodge and see that Captain Drummond, Captain Hugh Drummond, remains there until I yes. let... Wait a minute. You say that you're Commissioner Nielsen of Scotland Yard? Certainly. Well, how about your credentials? Uh, my credentials? Well, what do you mean? Well, I think I know Commissioner Nielsen, I do. And you're not him, you ain't. I'm not? I... What do you Why, mean? the Commissioner was here himself just now. And an impersonating an officer is a very serious offense. You might have to cool off in a cell, you might. What, what do you mean? Here, help! Help, come here a minute. I don't like it, I tell you. I want to get away from here. When all we need is two more weeks, we're staying. If we got rid of the girl in the first place, none of this would have happened. All right, all right, I was wrong. We can't do away with her now. Nielsen isn't a fool. He believes she's ill. You can tell him she can't leave her room. Drummond. Good night. I'll attend to this. It isn't against the law to shoot a prowler. And if the prowler happens to be Drummond, that's our good fortune. about to, uh, well, that is, I'm going to have a, I say, old girl, is my baby born? Oh, yes, you're the father of... Yeah. Hello, operator. Oh, I've been cut off. You, I'm the father. Nice work, how do you feel? Oh, I feel all right. Hello, Hello. operator, operator. Algy, I have it. Why, Christopher, I have it. Uh -huh. Now. Our friend the constable supplied this bullet, which killed Ted Clavering. Our friend the dummy supplied this one, which Mary you attended for me. Yes. Hello. Now. Hello, operator. Look at the writing on these two. Identical, are they not? Very pretty. <laughs> operator. Visitors, LG. Visitors. Inspector, you're just the man I wanted to see. Yes, and you ought to be shot for this night's work, young Huey Drummond. Impersonating an officer. No, they're under arrest. You do long work. Oh, but I say, Colonel, I Be just... Quiet. I'm a... 
Well, what are you going to say for yourself? Colonel, six weeks ago, one Ted Clavering died with a bullet in his heart. Tonight, fired from the same gun. The same gun, Mark, you, another bullet sped into the heart of a defenseless dummy. A, a dummy? A dummy, Colonel, upon which I performed an autopsy. And you found what? In its cork and excelsior heart, the bullet intended for me. Ah, pity it missed. And I suppose you'll be asking me to believe that the gun that fired these identical bullets belongs to Mr. Meridew. It does belong to him, Colonel. Oh. Yes, and I've told you before that I've known Meridew for years. But, Colonel, it takes only one false move to make an honest man a crook. Yes. Have you got those bullets? In there, sir. Huh. Open the door. Excuse me. Hello, operator. Operator. And now, Colonel, if you'll just follow me. Well, where are they? Well? Well? They're gone. Yeah. They're gone. And you are under arrest. Wait a moment. I know. Butler we captured. He must have escaped him. Butler? What butler? Styles of Greystone Manor. Well, while we were out there, he must have come in here. Do you expect me to believe all this? Now, first you insult my friends. Then you impersonate me. Then you expect me to swallow a lot of mildewed melodrama uh, about autopsies on dummies, identical bullets, Disappearing butlers, murdered chauffeurs, and uh, uh, and young girls who, who who write nursery rhymes. Oh, Colonel. Oh, Greystone Manor, please. But, uh, Commissioner. No, I'm here to enjoy a holiday, and I mean to enjoy it. Uh, shall I, sir? Yes. Yes. Oh, Inspector, please. And you and your man remain here. They won't get away from us, they won't, sir. But, Colonel, I've just become a father. Oh, well, there's nothing so extraordinary in that. I, is that you, Mary Dew? Yes. This is Nielsen. I'm a Drummond's. Yeah, well, at the moment, I have him handcuffed and under guard. And he's going to stay there for the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we play golf tomorrow? Yeah, that'll be very nice, yeah. Have your usual good luck. It's all right. Nielsen's got him locked up. Yes, keep him locked up. I'll have a couple of men down from the yard to take them up to London. You hear that, Master Huey Drummond? And for two weeks, while you are languishing behind prison bars, I shall be playing golf. Why? Hugh, what did he say? Nothing, nothing at all. Would you gentlemen mind if I called my man? I'd like a scotch and soda. No, sir, I don't know his idea. Penny! 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 He must be out, sir, he must. That's a colossal deduction, Higgins. As you say, he must be out. It became necessary for me to leave rather unexpectedly, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, will your friends join you, sir? An excellent idea, Tenny. I rather like it. What say, Constable, will you join us? Well, no, sir, it don't seem exactly right, it don't. You know, drinking with you after arresting you, sir, not does it, though? Mm, well, I can't recall anything in the book of rules or regulations. It's splendid, Alf. Of course you can't. Come, come, Constable. Well, I don't know as... Uh, oh, while we're quaffing these convivial cups, we'll allow bygones to be bygones. Eh, Higgins? All right, you are, sir. It's all in the line of duty, it is, sir, and no hard feelings, I hope. No, no hard feelings. Good. An inspired idea, Tenny. A harmless drink, sir, but uh, quite effective. Now, after Stiles escaped, you followed him? Uh, yes, sir. And this pursuit led you to uh, the stone wall surrounding Greystone Manor, sir. At this stone wall, he saw me, and I blackened both his eyes, sir. Uh, he caught me off my guard once. Uh, was that all that happened? Uh, no, sir. He disappeared. Into thin air? No, sir. Into the stone wall, I believe. Into the stone wall? You see, sir, um, when the gentleman's uh, fist made contact, there were a number of shooting stars, long ones, some natural comets, sir. And uh, during this uh, astronomical display, a portion of the wall seemed to open, and Stiles disappeared into that opening. 
Uh, that was my impression. Good. Now, do you think you'll find the same spot again? If I must. Come on, Andy. Let's go over to The telephone, sir. I don't need it, I tell you. I won't take it. Professor Stanton knows what's best for you, dear. There. Good night, my dear. Good night. This place, I stood here and Stanley stood there. Something else is open up directly behind you, sir. Yeah, here? In there, sir. Did I tell you? Oh, several times, sir. Mm. Aha. You solved the mystery, sir? Yes, sir. There seems to be a gate. That would explain everything, wouldn't it? It would. And unromantically enough, it won't even have to force an entrance. Come on. But you, I've yes. got to... Huh? After you, sir. Oh. That housey is Phyllis's room. Yes, but it seems to be barred. As a matter of fact, it is barred. But the one below it is not. If I only had out it, would this serve the purpose, sir? It would. I brought it from the car, just in case. A great idea, Tenny. I rather like it, sir. Yeah, but I say you. After I'm a family man now, you know, and when would be shut over. You and Tenny wait here. Come on. Well, there What's the matter with you? I heard something at him. There's someone moving about. Come on, we can't be out this all night. I'm coming. Phyllis. Phyllis.
Take Phyllis for a drop of Phyllis? Oh, God, I got her with your very life. Where would I take her to? If those constables regain consciousness, I know the jail. I took the keys from the constables, sir. Tell you a wonderful idea. I rather like them, sir. Now, come on, they'll never find her there. Huh? Yeah, then I can phone the hospital. Yes, but hurry, hurry. ago I rescued you from your room? Oh, that was Natalie. Sleep in your room? No. A little while ago, Professor Stanton gave me a sleeping tablet. I held it in my mouth. And when Natalie came to sleep, I was asleep. I smashed her over the head with a knife lamp. Phyllis, you're wonderful. You're one of us. One of you? Yes, it's Algie and Penny. And... Come on. Funny the way you keep hearing things. That's time to understand. Well, go upstairs and see whether everything's all right. Oh. Well, it looks as if we might be here for quite a while, Phyllis. to these ancient walls. And the sneezes, too. Yes. I suppose this beehive of industrious skullduggery will eventually quiet down. Now we can get out. <laughs> Seems to come from below. It does come from below. Yes. But don't you think we're talking too much? That's a very wise remark. But before we settle down to wait, may I ask just one simple question? If it doesn't take too long an answer. Oh, it doesn't. Do you cook? No. No? Oh, that's too bad. Well, we will now meditate. About what? this. Was everything all right upstairs? Everything is locked, if that's what you mean. But the window in the library wasn't. There's somebody in this house. What is that? Who's in there? Shoot. Open it up. There's a key on the other side. Well, push it out. What are you waiting for? Open that chest. Oh, 
Oh, hello. Good evening. Get up, Drummond. Keep your hands above your head. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, old chap, but I can't make it. Uh, would you mind if Pickleface gave me a lift? Help him. No tricks? No, no tricks. I could use a good one. Take his gun. And then, my friend, I have you because I haven't a gun. Then you're very careless, Captain Drummond. No gun. Straight ahead. To your left. You're doing it. Straight ahead. That'll be far enough. Judgment is none. I see. Another trip to Snowden's Marsh. Yes. It leaves no incriminating evidence. And when does this interesting event take place? There's no time like the present. No noise. Do you follow me? Perfectly. Professor Stanton might use his pup gun. And he is an excellent shot. Yes? Oh, Colonel Nielsen. Yes, Mary, you. Has Captain Drummond been there again? Why, no, Colonel. We haven't seen him here. No, it isn't necessary that we have a guard. I'm sure he won't bother us again. Yes, Colonel. Well, thank you so much. Good night. All right, Drummond. Surely not now. Why not? Well, my man and Mr. Longwood both know I'm here, and you must account for me. That's for us to worry about, if you don't mind. But I do. You're fond of your attractive sister? I don't see what that has to do with the situation. Suppose I tell you she's out in Greystone. But I say you're a liar. Suppose you look. Tell Miss Selden to come here at once. Hello. Hello. Give me Colonel Nielsen's place. Yes, dear Oaks. Hurry, please. into these fakes, these counterfeit bonds you've been making. Uh, get rid of them. By all means, because that's the sort of evidence that... Shut up! All right. Oh, no, you won't. You won't shoot me, because I happen to be the only one who knows where your charming sister is. Again. 
sent me in the police station. Hurry, please. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. You're quite a strenuous task, Jenny. Miss Clavering has an extremely well-developed right. R rather of the channel swimmer type, I should say so. <laughs> if I ever get my hands on you, I'll, I'll scratch your eyes out. It's a very trying situation, Jenny. You see, I've just... Quite so, sir. You've just become a father, sir. As things are, I don't know. No, you don't know what you've become the father of, sir. It, uh, or they, might even be quintuplets, sir. Jimmy, go uh, him. Look out, Gower. Uh, what the... Oh, oh, it's you, is it, Colonel? You, Longworth, of all people. Are, are you out of your mind? No, no, you see, I... Uh, well, that is Tenny. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, yeah, well, well, he, he suggested quintuplet. Has Drummond anything to do with it? I see, Colonel, why, he was my best friend. Yes, and, and he's at Meridews. I know it. Go on, drive on. See what's keeping Napoli in style. Them, Stanton. Drop that gun. Miss Clebering, exactly on the count of three, I'm going to end an awkward situation. And that awkward situation line belongs to me. One. Two. Phyllis, behind you! They're gone. Natalie and Sarah, they're both gone. Where's Mr. Selwyn? Proving, Mr. Meridue, that two can play the game. Where is she, Drummond? Yes. If you value your life, and I assure you, I do. Before my life and Miss Clavering's freedom, I'll bargain with you. I don't bargain for the last time. I demand that you... You're under arrest. Tell him, Tenny. And now, Colonel, let me explain. You don't have to. There's another of them. The one they call Styles, the butler. Find him. You mean you've known about Meridio? Oh, yes. Oh, for quite a while. <laughs> oh, don't take it so hardly. After all, you, you've been useful in your own quiet, acrobatic way. What? Oh! No! It's uh, a boy! Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Colonel. What? Oh, yes, and the same to you. But, Commissioner, why didn't you let me know? Oh, uh, my dear boy. Experience suggested a saner course than yours, and experience would have achieved the same result. <laughs> yes, I know, but Phyllis, uh... Phyllis. Phyllis. Oh, Phyllis! running away? Yes. Oh, Phyllis. With you. For light? Oh, come on. Let's go. Well, and where are you two going? Oh, we ought to make our wedding arrangements. What? Do you approve? Oh, most assuredly. If you'll take a long honeymoon. Promise? Oh, I do. <laughs> Why? Because when you leave England, I shall get a chance for a real vacation. Then pack your things, Commissioner, because we're on our way. Mm -hmm. 